let's go to um, covered uh, the RA and DEX system. This is the system how we uh, plot stars on the uh, celestial sphere. And then I said the RA and DEX system stay the same pretty much for the duration of our lifetime, for thousands of years. Then after a while, it slightly starts to change, okay? Now we talk about another system, the altitude and azimuth. The azimuth, AZ, stands for azimuth. It is measured in hours clockwise from the direction that you are facing. So azimuth is kind of like the RA. Remember the RA angle also goes from zero to 24 hours. But the difference is the azimuth is from the direction that you're facing. So typically speaking, north will be azimuth zero. So remember uh, this one was spacing north. This is zero. This is one hour azimuth. Two, three, four, five, six. So if a star or if any stellar object is directly east of me, you'll have a zimuth of six hours. If a star is directly north of me, you'll have a zimuth of zero. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If a star is south of me, you'll have a zimuth 12, and then so on and so on. If it's uh, west of me, you'll have a zimuth of what? Every Every quarter of a circle is six hours, right? So six, 12, 18, and then after that you go back and then you go full circle, 24 hours. Okay, so it's basically from the direction you're facing. The altitude is also resembles the deck system. The deck went from what? Negative 90 to, to 90, right? So ELT is like DEC as AZ is like RA. The difference is the altitude is measured from your horizon, right? So if a certain star, let's see, is barely at my horizon, I can barely see it, its altitude is zero degrees, okay? As the star begins to rise, see this angle is increasing, if, if the star is somewhere about here, the altitude, 45 degrees. Okay, it goes like that, 90 degrees. And then goes back down, 45 degrees. And then when the star sets, zero degrees, you see? So zero, 90, zero again. So if, a, if an altitude of a star is negative, what does that mean? negative, let's say, 20 degrees. That means it's below your horizon by 20 degrees. Can you see it? No. Eventually, it's going to rise, 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 and then the altitude is going to be positive, right? So positive altitude means you can see the star. Negative, you can't. You see? If it's directly overhead, what's the altitude? 90, yeah. Uh, this, let's see this picture here. <coughs> okay, you can kind of see this. What they're trying to describe to you here is, uh, let's say, this is the North Celestial Pole. Uh, the deck angle of a star at the North Celestial Pole is 90 degrees. And then these lines are called what uh, lines? Lines of starts with R, right, and then A, right ascension, RA, okay? It's probably written somewhere here anyway. Uh, lines of right ascension. That's where the RA angle comes from. So they're giving an example. Let's say there's a star there, and the star uh, RA is four, four hours. See, this is a zero hour right ascension. One hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. And then 20 degrees, 40 degrees. So what we would say the star's position in the sky is four hours R, R, uh, RA, 40 degrees deck, 40 degrees above the celestial equator. And then let's say you happen to be a ship here in the middle of the ocean. How would you see the star? That's a different question. In what direction would you have to look to see the star? 
Then you have to look, look at this thing. You, ha you have to imagine the globe, the, the semi-sphere that encompasses the ship. And then the ship, let's say, is facing north. Okay, with respect to the ship, where is the star? So if north is here and the star is here, you see, this is azimuth. So what would be the azimuth of the star, approximately? If the star was exactly here, the azimuth would be six hours, right? Uh, every, uh, this is uh, um, east, south, west, back to north. So it doesn't look like the azimuth is quite six hours, maybe four, okay? So this is four hours azimuth. What's the altitude? How many degrees above his horizon? Is it 90? No, the star is not at his zenith, you see? So it looks like it's about 60, 70, you know, something like that. So we would say the position of that star with respect to the ship is four hour, uh, uh, um, Four hours um, azimuth, or maybe six hours, no, not six hours. Uh, it's got to be three or four hours. Three or four hours azimuth, and then 60 degrees um, altitude, you see? So that's an example of how we do that. So basically, how would you say what's the relevance of the azimuth and the altitude? It tells you which direction you have to look to see the star based on your location, based on your direction, you see? So for example, if you buy a, a, an expensive telescope, like modern day telescopes, they also come with remote control, right? The, the telescope already has in there the data of thousands of stars, their locations, right? In other words, the telescope has the RA angle and the Deck, deck angle of every star inputted in there, right? So when you buy the telescope, you bring it home, you set it up. Can you start using it right away? Is it going to be able to find the stars for you? No, not at all. What kind of information do you think you need to put in the telescope? Your position, like location, your city, okay? You, I'm sure you have to put the date, right? How is it going to know the date and stuff? So you have to, it might have a GPS system there so that you can download the date automatically, you know. So you got to put the date. I'm sure you got to put the location. The location is going to tell the telescope what? Your horizon. You see, the, your location determines your horizon. It determines your zenith, you see. The other thing you have to tell it is what? It starts with D. And then I, and then R, yeah, the direction that you're facing the telescope, okay? So usually you will face a certain star, maybe use Polaris as the basis, right? Use uh, the star Polaris, and then you will say, I am now facing Polaris. And then now it knows you're facing north, plus it knows your city, plus it knows the date, and now it can figure out, so let's say you're trying to find the star. You face the telescope that way, and it already knows the RA and deck angle of that star. So it says this, the, the telescope moves by itself. And then looks at that star, you see. It can find it for you because you gave it the direction and the city and the date and the time of the, and the year, you see. So the, the importance of the altitude and azimuth is to tell you how to see a star, where to look to see a star, you see? Depending on where you're living. <clears throat> so let's assume you live in LA and you are facing north towards Polaris. The azimuth of Polaris is zero hours. So what will the altitude of Polaris be? Okay, so let's look, go over here. So
So if you live in, let's say this is the earth, and this is you, what did we say the other day that the latitude of LA was? Today's lecture will have several sets of times where we're doing, it will almost feel like a geometry class. Back to those days, you know. Uh, what's the latitude of LA? We said about 30, 34, you know. So 34 degrees. So if we draw the celestial sphere, your zenith is here. And then if I do a 90 degree angle from there, that's your horizon. It's like an arc, right? So that's your horizon, OK? Where is Polaris on this map? This is the North Celestial Pole, right? So in order to determine what, direction, what the altitude of Polaris is, we need this angle. Good old-fashioned geometry, OK? So if this is 34, what is this angle? This is a, this is a complementary angles, right? They have to add up to 90. So what is this angle? What's the complementary to 34? An angle that adds up to 34 to give you 90, 56. But then this is also 90 degrees. So this is 90, and then this is also 90. So if this is 56, what's this? 34 also. Okay, that's the key to how you can find Polaris from LA. If you're looking north, again, remember we said this is north. Look north, go about 34 degrees up. Right there, that's the North Star, okay, 34 degrees. So it's not quite 45 degrees, okay? That will be the North Star. Will it always be there during the course of the year? Oh, yeah. Because the whole sky moves around it. It never moves. OK? So use that key now. Use that, the, the fact that I told you to look for it between now and the next time we see each other. Every day, look at it. See 34 degrees, whether you can see it. And of course, the next thing I'm going to talk to you when we go to constellations is it's at the end of the Little Dipper. So that's also a clue for you to, to look at it, OK? Uh, how about its azimuth? Well, if you're looking at it, remember it's measured from north, it's also zero. How about if you live at, um, <coughs> how about if you live at the equator? What will be the azimuth of Polaris and what will the altitude of Polaris be if you live at the equator? So you can kind of do Another chart like this, OK? So if you live here, now your zenith is here. And then you draw a line. You draw 90 degrees. This is your horizon. And then where is Polaris? Right here. What does that mean, then? If you look straight up, you see this, the, the celestial equator, OK? In order to see Polaris, you have to look at the north. You have to look towards north. So imagine if I was at the equator now, today, I would look towards north and I go, where's Polaris? I can barely see it. It would be at my horizon, right? So what is its azimuth? Zero still, because I would look towards azimuth. I would look towards Polaris in the north direction. So this is zero. What is its altitude? How many degrees above my horizon is it? Zero. I could barely see it. Okay. 
So if you're living at the equator, is there such a thing as a North Star that you can use to navigate? No. If you live below the equator, you might have a South Star. If you live above the equator, you might have a North Star. Well, we do have a North Star. But if you live at the equator, OK, you have to use other things to navigate. You can barely see Polaris, OK? The azimuth of Orion. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm choosing the th same three things that we chose in the previous slide. Uh, we chose Polaris, we chose Orion and Hercules to, um, to find out what their azimuth and la uh, latitude is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the, some of these answers using the celestial sphere that we had the other day. So if you downloaded it by now, you can pull that up. OK, so the azimuth of Orion depends on the time of the day. So I can't tell you, you know, the azimuth of Orion is such, such and such a number because uh, Orion is going to rise, and then it's going to be traveling across the sky, and it's going to be setting. So it depends where it is. But if I worded the question this way, you should be able to answer it. The azimuth of Orion depends on the day. If, if Orion was exactly due east of you, then what, it's, what is its azimuth? So I'll word the question that way on the quiz. Assume Orion is east of you, zero hours north, east six. That's it. That's the answer. That's so for Azimuth, that's all you have to know. OK? How about the mel uh, maximum altitude? Now, why do I say maximum altitude? Because when it first rises, the altitude is going to be zero in the, in the eastern sky. Then it's going to rise. The altitude is going to increase, increase, increase. And then what I want to know is when it's in the highest in the sky, how high above my horizon will Orion ever be, get? Not every constellation will be exactly over us. If it was over us, its altitude would be 90, you see? So how high is Orion going to get? Well, look at the chart. Where was Orion? Right here. This is Orion. Remember the other day, we noticed that the Orion, the deck angle is zero degrees. So it's in the middle of the sky. So in order to determine the highest altitude that it will get, look at your horizon line. That's the horizon line for people living in LA. Now, in reality, the horizon line is an arc that if you draw on a globe, right? It's like, a, like this, a circle. But when you try to draw it on a flat map, the best you can do is draw it like a straight line, OK? So this is, this is the horizon line. So the question to ask is, how many degrees above my horizon line will Orion ever get? That will give you the maximum altitude. So 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55, or 56. OK? That's how it, this is it, 56 degrees. OK, so practically, again, what does that mean? How do I find Orion? <coughs> Orion, you see, this is our zenith. It's always going to be below our zenith. So when you're looking north, it's actually better that you turn around, face south. Orion is going to rise a little south of you over there. It's going to go like that. When it's at the highest in the sky, it's going to be 56 degrees above your southern horizon. 56 is something like that. Then it's going to set, and then the next day, same thing. OK? It's going to go over there, and then that's 56 degrees. You see? So that's what that means. I always want to show you the answer, then I want to show you what it means. Uh, that way, otherwise, it's just numbers to you, you know? 
Okay. Hercules also was one of the ones we chose the other day. That was this one here. What's Hercules going to do? Well, in terms of azimuth, again, the type of question that I might ask is something like this. Assume that uh, the Hercules is directly west of you. So again, that's the kind, of, that's all you have to know. East is 6, south is uh, 12, west is uh, 18, okay? What's the maximum altitude of Hercules? Mm, 90, why is that? Well, look where Hercules is located. You see this line? That's your meridian. See, that's your zenith. So basically, what does that mean? Hercules will rise directly east of you. It's going to go like this. As it's rising, the altitude is increasing. 20, 30, 40, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. See, directly over you. Then 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and then so on, okay? So how many degrees above your horizon is it from here? It's got to be 90. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. As a matter of fact, isn't that how we drew the horizon line? We drew the Z line, we drew the horizon line 90 degrees apart. So of course from here to here is 90, you see. Okay, we ended the last lecture with practicing on Alphard. We said, choose Alphard, and remember we practiced, and we said, what is its RA? What is its deck angle? And then we got the answer. But now let's practice on it, the RA and the, uh, the, let's practice the azimuth and altitude. So if I word the question this way, what's going to be the answers? Alpha, let's say it's exactly due south of you, azimuth is? South would be what? Always go from 0 to 24, no negatives. Zero, six, 12, 18, 24. 12, 12 hour azimuth means it's opposite of north. Okay, so 12 hours is the answer. Max, maximum altitude, we gotta go to the chart. Okay, how many degrees above your horizon? 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 46, maybe 47. The altitude is going to be less than uh, uh, Orion. What was Orion's altitude? 56. You see, Orion is bigger angle than Alphard. Alphard is smaller. So I would probably say about 47 from the horizon to the uh, Alphard. So again, what does that mean? To find it, turn around. It's going to rise over there. At its greatest altitude, 47 degrees from the sky, from, the, from your horizon. And it's going to go like that. OK? This, this topic of how they're rising and setting is leading us to the next page's lecture, which is uh, talking about the rotation of the sky. How are, how are the stars, um, uh, the path of the, the sky. So out of this, therefore, the conclusion is any object on your zenith has an altitude of 90. Some, some final conclusions. Any object at your horizon has an altitude of 0. So if it's at your horizon, it's altitude of 0. Any object with an altitude less than negative, less than zero, cannot be seen by you. <coughs> so any of these objects here, 
if you take a look at any of these objects, the constellation Bootus, Hercules, uh, Gemini is kind of close to it, uh, Triangulum, Andromeda. All of these, they're pretty much concentrated at our zenith. That means they're rising east of us, they're going exactly overhead. You see? These guys are what? South of us. This part of the sky is north of us. How about these guys? The ones below the horizon line. There's a famous constellation there known as the Southern Cross. Look at where it's located. It's below our horizon line. Okay? What does that mean? What is its altitude? Negative. Can we see that constellation from LA? No. This one you cannot see. 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 So there are several stars and constellations down here. Anything below the horizon line, you cannot see. Okay? So to, in order to see them, you move down towards the equator. You travel down towards the equator. If you're at the equator, you can see the whole sky. 